happening from inside the nucleus of all of the action today, the U.S. Capitol, where a government shutdown is looming, with the House facing a September 30th deadline to pass a budget for the new fiscal year. And amidst an historic impeachment inquiry into a sitting president of the United States, Lawmakers have just eight days to agree on spending levels to keep the government funded, as Republicans look to rein in the Biden administration's out-of-control spending, with the nation's debt approaching a record $33 trillion, as an impeachment inquiry is underway against President Biden over allegations of bribery and money laundering, with Republicans saying that the evidence is damning, including 176 suspicious activity reports, 20 shell companies set up while Biden was vice president, and witness testimony alleging Joe Biden's involvement in selling access to the nation's highest office to foreigners. House Democrats are sticking with the president, who say he's done nothing wrong. They haven't uncovered anything. I think the president and the White House have been fully cooperative. And again, I think they're just sticking around much as they did in Benghazi, trying to create diversions. I think there's something like 25 or 30 Republicans who are saying they don't agree with impeachment for obvious reasons. There's no high crime or misdemeanor. There's no tre treason, no bribery. And the Republicans uh, are engaging in a kind of an evidence-free, fact-free impeachment inquiry. Uh, that has nothing to do with high crimes and misdemeanors and has everything to do with Kevin McCarthy's weakness as a speaker. Joining me right now here in the Rayburn Room in the Capitol in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is the Speaker of the House, Congressman Kevin McCarthy. Speaker McCarthy, thanks very much for joining us and talking Thank with us this morning. Thank you, and welcome to the Capitol. I think it's your first time you've had your show in the Capitol. Yes, we are happy to be here where all of the action is taking place. You just heard Adam Schiff. Call you weak as a speaker. Your response? Uh, it's so ironic. Here's a man who lied to the American public. I think we're showing the American public how we follow the Constitution. An impeachment inquiry is simply the ability that gives the Congress the strength to get the answers to the questions. Think about it. All this information we have now found, we never would have known had not the Republicans taken the majority. We now know the president lied to the American public that, yes, he did get involved with his son's business, that they did sh set up shell companies, that the FBI has an allegation from a whistleblower that the Br Bidens were bribed. We now have IRS agents that come forward and say, said the Biden administration, the DOJ, has treated his family different than others, let a statute of limitations run out. And then the whole question lies, did he get involved with Burisma and get a prosecutor fired in Ukraine um, under his work because of what his son was doing? Yeah. These are all allegations that we need answers to. And now we found out just recently that he used different names in emails so you couldn't FOIA the email and get it, but now we have to have the ability to get that. So I think you see the American public, we're simply following the facts wherever it takes us. But unfortunately, it looks like a culture of corruption with this family. Yeah, I, I want to get back to this because I know that there's a lot of people out there who want to know if you are going to subpoena uh, Hunter Biden, Biden family members. So I'll get back to that in a moment. Let's talk about the meetings that you've been having all weekend over this September 30th deadline. What can you tell us in terms of a path forward. Do you have agreement on a path forward? I feel we made some good progress this weekend. You know, when Republicans took the majority, we wanted to change Washington. We make members show up for work. No more proxy voting. Bills have to go through committee. No more of these omnibuses where bills, the appropriation bills get jammed to us on Christmas time. But what we're trying to do is pass them individually. Unfortunately, I had a handful of members last week that literally the Republicans stopped the Department of Defense appropriations from coming forward. None of them can complain. This is giving our troops a pay raise, making our military strong uh, against China, getting the wokeism that the Democrats have put in out. And so I'm trying to get that to move forward, to stop, to um, make sure that the Republicans aren't stopping us from being able to get our work done before the 30th. So why don't you just bring the bill to the floor to see who would vote against funding the military? Well, we will do that this week. I, I gave them an opportunity this weekend uh, to try to work through this, and we'll bring it to the floor, win or lose, and show the American public who's for the Department of Defense, who's for our military, who's for giving them a pay raise and making sure we can take the wokeism out. Walk us through the issues uh, that you're feeling pushback from this handful of members on a continuing resolution. What do you want to see happen here? Well, I understand the frustration we have with this administration, but it's a difference of strategy. Some people say you should shut down, but think about this. 
I've been through shutdowns and I've never seen somebody win a shutdown. Because when you shut down, you give all your power to, to the administration. But how are you going to win your arguments to secure the border if the border agents don't get paid? How are you going to win the arguments to get wokeism out of the Department of Defense if even our own troops won't be being, being paid? You have no strength there. I think the greatest ability to it is finish the appropriation work, the show that we do, give us a short time period to get that done, and make the case to the American public. I will promise you this, that based upon this administration's policies along the border, you got the mayor of New York becoming a border community, right? Everybody wants this border secure. We'll win that argument. And I think that's the basis. You've got AOC being heckled in New York. You've got every community feeling what's happening with fentanyl, killing Americans across this country, all based upon the Biden's administration's decisions. And we've got to be able to stop that. Yeah, no, I understand that much of the common ground is around this wide open border. You mentioned that ISIS members are coming over the border as well. This, this is important, and, and you're, you've covered the border, I think, better than anyone on television early on. What we have now found out, that somebody associated with ISIS has been hired to bring people across the border. You've watched now that the Biden administration, we caught more people in the month of February on the terrorist watch list than in the entire last four years under the last administration. So I have requested last Friday a full classified briefing for all members of Congress about what's happening on the border right now, but most importantly, what's happening with this individual that has ties to ISIS. This was so important that they got a, they had a classified briefing sent to all the cabinet members in the White House that we heard just last week. I think members of Congress need to know about this. Well, I mean, have you gotten a response from Alejandro Mayorkas, Joe Biden, on, on ISIS members walking across into America? Well, they say they're tied to ISIS, so I don't know. I've read it in the CNN. That's why I want a classified mm -hmm. briefing for all members. We only have this happen on classified briefings a couple times a year on threats to America. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of our greatest threats to America right now. Well, look, I I understand most people agree with that, that there's common ground on securing the border. But your members, many of your members, even beyond the most conservative, do not want to see Nancy Pelosi's policies continue. So how are you going to push back on that and in ensure that you can actually see the cuts in spending that you want? Well, the only way you're going to be able to do that is you have to pass the appropriation bills, because these are Republican bills. These are the most conservative bills going forward. But remember, you don't get it all your own way. So the Senate, you have to compete with the Senate. And unfortunately, on the Senate side, the Republicans and Democrats over there are writing bills to spend more money. Ours are the most conservative, but if we don't pass them, we're weaker in the negotiations. So anytime a Republican wants to hold back and stop the floor from working when Republicans have the majority, that puts us in a weaker position to win in the end of the day. But even if you get agreement, and do you think you'll get agreement this week, by the way? I believe we'll get agreement this Even week. Even if you get agreement, isn't, aren't we at a standstill anyway? Are you going to get agreement in the Senate? Is Joe Biden going to sign this? I don't know, because the Senate uh, blew up last week, too. They could not pass anything. So we have a real problem here. I mean, look what's happening under this Biden America country. The most union president in the world did policies that he's getting union auto workers fired because he's turning everything towards China and electric cars. And now they're all on strike. You got gasoline at the highest price because he attacks the energy where America could be energy independent. He makes our, our allies weaker, our adversaries stronger. Mm. He brings us inflation by his runaway spending. But we've been able to chip away with that. You know, with the debt ceiling, it was the biggest cut in American history, more than $2 trillion. We forced, actually, government government to work with a 1% cut across the board if they don't get all their work done on appropriations. We're setting a structure yeah. to change the course of history. Well, all, all of that, the policies that you mentioned of the Biden administration is one reason that Donald Trump is leading in the polls right now. What's your take on this, that as we see more indictments of Donald Trump, he seems to be gaining in terms of popularity with the public. Will it, he be the nominee? I think he will be the nominee. And the thing is, President Trump is stronger today than he was in 2016 or 2020. And there's a reason why. They saw the policies of what he was able to do with America, putting America first, making our economy stronger. We didn't have inflation. We, we didn't have these battles around the world. We didn't look weak around the world. Well, it looks like Ron DeSantis is now trying to work with your colleagues who are pushing for a shutdown.
Yeah, but I don't think that would work anywhere. A shutdown would only give strength to the Democrats. It would give the power to Biden. It wouldn't pay our troops. It wouldn't pay our border agents. More people would be coming across. I actually want to achieve something. And this is where President Trump is so smart, that he was successful in this. You know, President Trump is beating Biden right now in the polls. Yeah, we have the poll. Let's show yeah. it. He's stronger than he has ever been in this process. And look, I... I I served with Ron DeSantis. He's not at the same level as President Trump by any shape or form. He would not have gotten elected without President Trump's endorsement. And so I believe our best step forward, pass our appropriation bills so we're stronger. Take the wokeism out, secure our border to make America stronger. What about the impeachment inquiry? Will you subpoena Hunter Biden? I mean, Don Jr. spent 20 hours. They didn't have any evidence, and yet they brought him in. They questioned him. How come you haven't brought in Hunter Biden? Well, the first thing is I don't subpoena anybody. I let well, Jim Jordan. I let committees do their work. But think about this, Maria. You wouldn't know any of this if we weren't in charge. Oh, I, I understand. And, and I understand so that. Do you, the one thing American public has to understand is there's a strategy behind everything. We only follow facts. Hunter Biden will get subpoenaed, but when's the appropriate time? Do you do it because television wants it, or do you do it around the facts and the timing when Comer? I think we should have the bank statements to actually know where did the money go so you would know the questions to ask Hunter Biden. To, to just to subpoena Hunter Biden because you want to fundraise or you want to do something, that's not how we're going to run an investigation. Don't you have emails that say Hunter Biden was complaining that he was paying all the family bills? That came from the laptop. But we also have 5,400 emails that Joe Biden uses vice president a false name that we have not been able to get yet. Wouldn't it be smarter in an investigation that you were able to get all of those emails? Because would that show we saw one where it was sent to Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, about a phone call with the president of Ukraine? Wouldn't you want to know all that information so you can ask all the right questions? So I think let them do their job. They're doing a very good job at it, and let them follow it and take it at the right time. Are there plans to subpoena any other family members? Because according to the Republicans, family members accepted money from all Well, it looks countries. to me like nine Biden family members got money. I want to see bank statements. I think they'd have to come before us to answer the questions. Remember what impeachment inquiry is. It empowers Congress in a legal ability to get the information we need. That's going to be bank statements. That's going to be credit card statements. That's going to be family members coming in and answering the questions so the American public can know. I know last week uh, fireworks were all over the place here. You have Matt Gates pushing you to shut down the government until he gets what he wants in the face of all of this. He tweeted this this morning um, about you saying, um, Speaker McCarthy tries to subjugate my critique of his failure as some sort of ethics committee reaction. What is your reaction to Matt Gates? Are we now once again talking about a motion to vacate? Well, we could. And that would be a... That, if you did a motion to vacate, you would have to... A handful of Republicans work with Adam Schiff, Eric Swalwell, Ihan Omar, to remove the speaker. And it would be exactly what the president wants, because it would shut down. How would we... You know how much we went through in January. How would we ever select... The speaker, I would stay, and we'd go through it. So there would be no investigation. But it's not something I lay out there that, that Matt's mad about an ethics complaint. It's an ethics complaint that happened in the last Congress that Matt went to other members saying, I'm going to try to influence Kevin to get involved in an ethics complaint. I can't do it. Yeah. It's illegal. It's, it's pretty it's, extraordinary. It's not something I will be a part of. It's, it's extraordinary to me that in the face of all that you and your colleagues have been able to uncover, yes. you're once again... Um, getting these threats from Matt Gates and a handful of others? Look, th these are individuals. That they have a right to do what they want. But I am only going to focus on the American public. Look, I, I showed in January I will never give up. We have made great progress here in changing this capital. And when you change Washington, you get enemies. I, I got Adam Schiff. I got Eric Swalwell upset because I kicked him off mm. the Intel Committee. You got Matt Gates working with uh, Swalwell to try to throw me out. That's all well and good, but I'm not going to be deterred from that. Yeah. I'm going to focus. We're going to secure our border. We're going to cut spending and inflation. We're going to make America energy independent. We passed the Parents' Bill of Rights. We've been able to remove so many of the IRS agents. We're going after the next. We're going to make our military stronger and get this pay raise through, even if they want to vote against it. What's the likelihood of a shutdown? Look, I want to make sure we don't shut down. I don't think that is a win for the American public, and I definitely believe it will make our hand weaker 
if we shut down. I think it was Churchill who said, you have enemies? Good. That means you stood for something. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> Judge me by my enemies. I think America will stand on our side. Speaker McCarthy, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Congressman Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House. Quick break, and then Hunter Biden was indicted this week.